In this tutorial, we're going to cover the Request for Quote or RFQ module, uh, which is an optional module available for Epicor Advanced Requisition Management. Now, between different organizations, the RFQ process may differ somewhat, but from the perspective of ARM, uh, we now offer a request for quote module, uh, which is positioned before the requisition stage in ARM. And what it allows you to do is to create a list of things that are required, uh, and then you can submit that to various vendors and invite them to quote or bid on those list of items. Uh, and you can stipulate the time frame with with which they have to respond to you, and also uh, a time frame by which they have to supply the items. Uh, and it will really allow you to get pricing and availability from your vendors before the requisition is even generated. And so it's a really good head start uh, to putting together the requisition. And then once those responses are received, you'll be able to obviously generate a requisition from that. So what will happen is that once the items are assembled uh, and ready to be submitted, then upon submission, an email is sent to the various vendors and the email body will contain uh, some basic information about the RFQ or the items being requested. Uh, but attached to that email will also be a PDF version of that request, uh, but also an Excel file which will allow uh, the vendor more than one way with which they can respond to the RFQ. So the, RF, the, re, the vendor may choose to respond by either just providing some text responses in an email, uh, or they could opt to fill in the Excel uh, file that was sent to them, uh, and they can actually then import, or, or the user can import that Excel information directly back into the RM, ARF, uh, RFQ module. Okay, so here we see in this graphic, we have three vendors which have responded to the RFQ, um, but once the responses are received, we can then determine which responses we will accept and which ones we'll deny. Now this can be done from the header level, or it can be done line by line. But ultimately, once we have uh, entered those responses and reviewed that detail, we can determine which of those lines and which of those responses will then become uh, a requisition. Okay. So last of all, you can see the process in a more generalized format and where it sort of sits within position of the, the whole ARM workflow. So the RFQ process is all about sending out a request for the things that you need to those vendors, accepting or denying their responses, and then generating a requisition from those responses. Now the important takeaway point here is that those responses will then generate a requisition, which of course still uh, goes through our, our ARM approval and is subjected to that approval flow that you have finely tuned within ARM. Okay, so with that, let's take a quick look at what this might look like in the real, in the real world. So I've flipped over into my live environment now and I'm logged in as Maurice. Uh, now, if he has access to it, he can see a list of all of the RFQs in the system by clicking the RFQ menu along the left-hand side. So you can see here that we have various uh, RFQs that are in the system. Some have already gone through the process of RFQ and have been generated as requisitions. Some have been submitted, but we're awaiting responses. So much like we see with the requisition stage in ARM, we have this global snapshot of all of the RFQs in the system and, we're, and the status of each. Now to begin a new RFQ, we go to the top, uh, and once again, provided Maurice has access to do so, he sees an option there for, for generating a new RFQ. So we begin an RFQ, and you can do this in a few different ways or in different orders. Uh, but first of all, you would name the requisition. Uh, you would have to stipulate a date by which the vendor needs to provide you with responses. Now, in this example, I'm saying that I'm giving my vendors one week to respond to this RFQ. Uh, and I might also stipulate a date by which the items need to be um, supplied. Okay, so I'm saying here that I'm going to offer them one week to respond to the requisition, uh, but in addition to that, I'm then only going to give them an extra month to provide or supply the items that I'm, that I'm requesting from them. So uh, here we go. So I'm going to add some items. We're going to keep this pretty simple, 00C1, and you can see that I'm adding these items manually. Now, you can actually uh, create a CSV or an Excel file and import. You can see an option there to import those lines, which might be a quicker way if you wanted to work on the items uh, separately uh, offline and then import them into uh, the ARM RFQ module. But for the sake of the exercise today, I'm just gonna manually add a few of these. 
and 00C4. And let's just say we're going to request, say, 10 of each. Okay, and it can be as simple as this. So we've requested some items. Um, we can put in some unit reference costs if we know how much we're prepared to pay for it, for example, uh, but it's not essential. Uh, same thing again, we can add some notes if we want, but the, old, the, the game here is to add what it is that you would like um, a quote on, uh, and then you invite the vendors. So we're gonna invite two vendors today. So let's go for ACME. Okay, so you, now you can see that ACME has been invited to participate and it's also telling us that we haven't yet sent this RFQ to them, obviously. Uh, and then we're going to also add a BCM, just to, as, a, as a competitor here. So we've got two, two potential suppliers that we are going to send this list of items off to uh, to get their bid or their quote. So once I'm ready to go, I click send RFQ. And then what it will do is we'll find the email information for these vendors. Now these vendors are set up in Epicor, so all of that email information obviously is, is pre-configured. Uh, but once the RFQ has been sent, you can see that the status now changes to submitted. Uh, and now we're ready to accept the responses from these vendors. Now this might happen straight away, it might take a few days. Uh, keep in mind that they have one week with which to respond. Uh, but the next step would be that we would start receiving these supplier responses. So let's uh, open ACME, let's assume that they have responded to us. Uh, and if you remember from the PowerPoint, we know that they've been given uh, not only a PDF copy of this particular RFQ, which you can view yourself at any time by clicking the, the print view button, uh, but they've also been sent an Excel file, which they could, could populate and return to us, uh, or they might just respond in email in the text body. So if they've done that, all we need to do is to click enter response, and then we can see a list of the things that, uh, that we've sent out. Uh, and what we're gonna ask for here is we'll, we'll just enter basically what they've said in response. Now they might say that this is going to be $50, uh, but that they can supply the full 10 because they have them in stock. Maybe they can't supply this at all because it's out of stock. Uh, and maybe they can supply these two items as well. Uh, maybe at $100 and I don't know, I'm not sure what these are actually worth, but it's just for the sake of the exercise anyway, and maybe $99 for these. Okay, so they can submit this, this response. Um, we can enter that, and we can choose to do an, a number of things here. So we can either choose to accept this as it is, which I've now done, uh, but at any time I could turn around and say, well, actually, this is not really a competitive price, uh, and this one's not even available, so I'm gonna deny these two lines. Okay, so I can deny anything individually or I can actually choose to reject the entire RFQ from them if I like. Uh, but for the meantime, let's just accept uh, half of this RFQ and because I have these two lines denied, they, they are going to be excluded obviously from what we accept. So there we go. So if I open this response again, you can see that now I have two of those lines denied but the remainder has been accepted. Okay, so that's it for ACME, but that's really the manual way of entering the responses. The better way, and the way that we encourage our, our suppliers to respond, is via an Excel, XML document, okay, or, or an Excel document. And when they have done so, we can actually import this directly. So if I click the import button for ABCM, uh, all I need to do is to find the Excel document that they sent me, uh, and in this test example, I've got one here called response. And when I click on response, uh, I can then import that. Now, just an FYI, uh, this is what it will look like. Okay, so you can see there that, you know, it's just a basic XML file. But once we've uh, imported that, you'll see that the information uploads, open the response, and you can see that all of that information has been automatically populated. Okay, so we can accept that. And so we would go through, and depending on how many vendors we have, we would be free to go through and, and either deny individual lines or accept individual lines. But once we've uh, completed this process and we have a selection of the vendors with which we'd like to proceed with, now it might just be one vendor or it might be various lines from several vendors, it doesn't really matter. All we need to do is to select the ones that are applicable to what we want and then we can create a requisition from that. So you can see I'm gonna do that now. 
When I create the requisition, I do need to identify which location this requisition is for. Um, and any attachments, of course, I want to have filter through to the, uh, to the uh, EQ or the requisition stage as well. So I click Save. And now it generates my requisition in just a moment's time. Here comes my requisition. Now my requisition obviously is, a, is, a, is an accumulation of all of the different RFQ lines that we accepted. So it is quite possible that we may see several lines duplicated. Uh, now what I can do here is look at each one and say, well, okay, if this one was $50, but this was $13, then obviously I don't need this line anymore. Right, so you don't need to whittle down or identify the best pricing from within the RFQ stage. All you need to do is accept the line as a legitimate bid, and then you can bring them all into the, to the requisition stage as we're at now and determine which ones you wish to proceed with. Okay, now the process from this point is the same as it would be if we had generated this requisition from scratch. That is, we get to uh, obviously submit and then trigger that approval flow. Now you can see here that if we have generated this requisition as the result of an RFQ process, we will get a little uh, note indicator there that will tell us that this has generated as such from a, from a quote. Okay, so that's essentially the process, but it gives us a springboard with which to contact our suppliers in advance, get the bids on the items that we wish to request before even starting our requisition.